Welcome to the Checkpoint Certified Security Administrator course. In this particular module, we are going to be installing the Security Management Server and also the Security Gateway. So let's begin by having a look at the topology. If you recall, we said that the Checkpoint Security Architecture is actually made up of your smart console, your security management server, and also your security gateway. And then we said that the smart console needs to be installed on a Windows operating system. So we have a Windows server that runs on the Windows operating system. Now this Windows server is going to be housing the smart console. But in addition to housing the smart console, this Windows server is also going to be used as an active directory domain controller. So the Windows server is going to be integrated with our checkpoint security management server. Okay, so let's talk about smart console. On our smart console, we are going to be creating policies we are going to be creating objects, we're going to be creating users. So when we create our policies, our policies are going to be saved on the security management server. So this security management server is actually a database server that stores policies, that stores objects, that stores users, that stores administrator credentials. It also stores licenses. And then it stores logs as well. It can be used for automation and then it can manage your security gateways. So we have Smart Console on our Windows server. We have the security management server. And then we have our security gateways. Now, if you observe, our security gateways are in a cluster. So one is going to be active, the other one is going to be on standby. If the active firewall you can call your security gateway firewall, or you can say a firewall is a security gateway. The two terms are interchangeable. They can be used interchangeably. Okay, so th these security gateways, they are in a cluster. You can see the synchronization interface between them. So we have smart console on a Windows server. We have the security management server. We have two security gateways in a cluster. We have switches connecting the devices. Your switches are intermediary devices that connect, you know, devices and everything. So you have your switches and then you have the ISP router, which is our edge device. And then we have the internet. So let's power up the ISP router because we want these devices to gain access to the internet. Then another thing that we're going to do will be to power the security management server because if you remember we said that in this particular module we are going to be installing the security management server so the first thing that i'll do would be to power this up as soon as it powers up then the next thing that we would want to do would be to double click on this so that it takes us to okay so let's wait for this to come up Okay, so as you can see, it's coming up, we'll wait for it to come up, and then while it is coming up, we'll also do the same thing for the security gateway. So we're going to be running both of them simultaneously. We'll run them concurrently. Okay, so let's monitor the security gates the security management server again. It's still coming up. So let's check if this has come up. Okay, it's fine. So as you can see, it is actually prompting us to log in. So we're going to impute our credentials. Okay, so as you can see, this is asking us to access the web UI. Okay, so we'd have to, let's check what our IP address is. If you want to check your IP address, you would have to use the command show interface. 
So if you type show interfaces, it will show you all the interfaces, all the interfaces that you have. So let's do show interface Ethernet server. So as you can see, our IP address is 15.3. So we're going to log into our, our Windows server. When we log into the Windows server, we'll use our web browser to access the web UI of the security management server and also access the web UI of the security gateway. So let's check if the security gateway is up. Oh, it's still coming up. So the very moment it comes up, we'll have to log in and then configure the first time configuration wizard. So as you know already, there are two stages to the installation of your security gateway or your security management server. The first one is where you have to configure the partitioning. You specify the size of the partitions and then you would also specify the IP addresses of the device. And then you would also specify the like your credentials and many more. And then you have to wait for it to install, it will reboot. Then you get to the second stage of installation where you have to log in from the web UI. So the first one is done from the console. You have to consult your device to perform that first time installation. The second one is done from the web UI. So let's assess our web UI. So we'll come to our Windows server. We'll bring up our web browser. Meanwhile, let's check the security gateway. Let's check if it has come up. Oh, okay, it's still coming up. So we'll log in to our Windows server. We'll bring up our web browser. Okay, so we're going to be imputing the IP address of our security management server. If you check the topology, you would see that the IP address of the security management server is 192.168.15.3. So it is going to give you this warning saying that there's a potential security risk ahead. This is fine. The reason why you're seeing this warning is because of the SSL certificate. So we'll click on accept the risks and continue. So it will take us the web UI. Now the very next thing that we would want to do would be to log in to the device. Okay, so the very moment we log in, you would see the first time configuration wizard prompt welcoming, um, welcoming us to, to checkpoint R81. Okay, so let's wait for the prompt. Okay, this is beautiful. So, welcome to Checkpoint. The first thing that we'll do will be to click on Next. Then it is going to ask us if we want to proceed with the configuration. You have the option to install from Checkpoint Cloud. You can install from your USB. Or if you have an existing snapshot, you can import that snapshot. But in this case, there is no snapshot. So we're going to continue with our R81 configuration Okay, so if you check our topology, our default gateway is going to be 192.168.15.1. Okay, so let's take a look at the topology. You can see our security management server. Now, this security management server is part of our local area network, and it is behind the security gateway. So if you check, the default gateway is going to be 15.1. And then for our security gateway, the default gateway, for our security gateway, the default gateway is going to be 20.254. So I'll take that again. For your security management server, the default gateway is the IP address of the security gateway, which is 192.168.15.1. And for your security gateway, its default gateway is going to be the IP address of the ISP router, which is 192.168.20.254. So coming back to our Windows server, so we're going to be imputing the default gateway. We'll click on next. Then the very next thing, okay, we can see a prompt asking us to impute the host name. So if you check the topology, you will see that the host name is CPSMS. 
for our primary DNS server, because we have an Active Directory domain controller and its IP address is 192.168.15.4, we're going to be imputing the IP address of the Windows server. Then for the secondary DNS server, we're going to be making use of Google's DNS. If you recall, Google's DNS is 8.8.8.8, so we're going to be imputing that. Then for the time zone, I'm going to be imputing my time zone, which is Lagos. You can impute your time zone as well. Optionally, you might choose to use NTP. Okay, then talking about the deployment mode, if you remember, we said that we have the standalone deployment and the distributed deployment. That in your standalone deployment, you have the security gateway and the security management server installed on the same appliance. But for your distributed deployment, they are going to be on separate appliances. For this lab, we would be going for the distributed deployment. So what this means is that we are going to be on checking security gateway and we'll check only the security management server because we want this particular appliance to be a security management server. Now you can define your security management as primary, as secondary, or as a log server. It's possible to have your security gateways in a cluster performing redundancy. You can have a primary security management server and a secondary security management server. In case one goes down, the other one comes up. If you want to go for any of those options, then you can select either primary or secondary. Also, recall that your security management server can also function as a log server. Your, your security gateways, they do not store logs. Rather, they forward all logs to a log server. So it's a, now your security management server has capacity to store logs as well. But then there are tendencies or there are situations where your security management server might get filled up with logs. So it will consume all the space and this will affect the performance of your security management server. So in some cases, you might want to have a separate log server. Okay, a log server that its duty is just to store logs and it's, it's going to be used for smart events. If, if that is what you want, then you can select the log server. But for this particular model, we are going to be selecting the primary security management. Then of course, you can select this option that says automatically download and install Blade contracts. Then we'll click on next. We'll select the Gaia administrator. Now for the trusted client, it's possible to say that you want your security management server to only be accessible by a particular IP address. If that is what you want, you can select this machine and you specify that IP address. You could say it has to be accessed by a particular network or a range of IP addresses. But for this lab, we're going to select any IP address. Then we'll uncheck this. It's optional. You can choose to send data to checkpoints. And when you're done, you click on finish. And then you can click on yes to start the configuration. So if you observe, this is going to run through until it gets to 100%. And then with this, you have configured your security management server. So in the next module, we are going to be installing the security gateway. I'd like to thank you for your time so far. I'll meet you in the next module. Thank you.